morning, everyone, and welcome to First Bank's Realtor Seminar. My name is Eric Frazier, and I'm the Vice President and Mortgage Advisor with First Bank. My license number is 461807. The views and opinions that I express today are my own, do not necessarily reflect that of First Bank. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Golden State Finance Authority, and I have a special guest, Carolyn Sansari, who is the Director of Marketing for the Golden State Finance Authority, uh, and she's going to go into a deep dive about the Open Door Program and the Platinum Program, and I really appreciate her taking time out of her busy schedule to join us today. I also appreciate you, as a real estate professional, taking time out of your day to get this information. Now, today is the beginning of a, a series of seminars. Uh, these seminars are one hour in length in terms of presentation, and then we're allowing about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the number of questions, after that to answer questions. And so if you have any questions, we, we want to encourage you to put them in the chat room now, type your questions into the chat room, and or to save them for later uh, during the Q&A period. We really appreciate your uh, commitment to education. You know, knowledge is power, and the power is now. It really is. This event is being sponsored by the Powers Now Media. In addition to being a VP and mortgage advisor at First Bank, I'm also the president and CEO of the Powers Now Media. You can go to thepowersnow.com, and there you'll find a ton of information for magazines, podcasts, radio shows, uh, and TV shows all geared towards educating consumers and supporting real estate professionals and uh, building their brand, building their business, building their knowledge. Knowledge is power and the power is now. I also wanna direct your attention on that website to the Mortgage Spotlight. Again, thepowersnow.com, look under television, you'll see the Mortgage Spotlight. I've had the pleasure of working with Carolyn's in Surrey now for a while and we have recorded four different interviews about uh, the programs that she'll be presenting today. And so if you want to just get an even deeper understanding um, beyond this event, you can get that information not only on our website, website but also on the Golden State website as well. Okay, so uh, without any further ado, I'm going to bring Carolyn on, uh, have her introduce herself, uh, and then get started with the presentation. Welcome, Carolyn, to the First Bank Realtor Seminar. Thank you for having me today, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. And you know, it's it's a passion of mine, not just my job, to sit here and talk about uh, home buyer assistance programs. We all know that affordability in California is quite a challenge right now. Prices have been quite high uh, recently, but we've seen some extremely low interest rates. And so there is an opportunity for people to start building some financial security through real estate, even with high prices. And one of the, the, the biggest challenges that we see today with millennials, what we see with people trying to get back into the home buyer market is coming up with the cash resources for down payment and closing costs. So I'm pleased to be here because I do wanna show some solutions to the affordability issue by sharing um, with everyone on the, on this uh, Zoom event um, about the down payment assistance programs from Golden State Finance Authority. So with that, I would like to share my screen and go through some slides just so I can make sure that I cover the most important content to the realtors with us today. Does that sound like a good idea? Perfect idea, go for it. The way that I like to um, discuss the topic with real estate agents is really from a perspective of you not losing sales, not losing transactions because of someone's financial um, position. And oftentimes a real estate agent is the first person to kind of find out where someone is in terms of what kind of resources they have. And so you as a real estate agent can be the link to programs that can make a difference, that can maybe get them into a house sooner than they thought possible, maybe give them more purchasing power. So imagine as a real estate agent, what can down payment assistance do for you and your clients? Golden State Finance Authority has been offering home buyer assistance programs in California for almost 30 years. We've been able to help over 83,000 individuals and families to purchase homes and the vast majority of the time, it's because of the down payment and closing cost assistance that we provide. 
we've been able to provide over $634 million in down payment and closing cost assistance money in California. Now we are a public agency, a quasi-governmental agency, and that gives us the ability to take your standard mortgage products that we've all heard of and then couple them with down payment, closing cost assistance, and flexible guidelines to allow for people to get into homes maybe sooner than they thought possible. But when people think of down payment assistance, whether it's a lender or home buyer or real estate agent, oftentimes they hesitate to look into it because they're worried about some of the things that may actually make it more challenging. So let's start off by just talking about the flexibility and, and maybe breaking some of the myths out there around down payment assistance. When it comes to Golden State Finance Authority's programs, we, um, we really focus on accessibility. So they are not limited to first time home buyers. So whether somebody is returning to home buying, they owned a home in the past, or maybe they're a first time home buyer, or maybe they own a property today but they're gonna be purchasing a new residence that they're moving into as an owner-occupied residence. And I don't mean new property, I just mean they're gonna be moving into a new home to them and the cash resources to get in with down are short. So again, no first-time home buyer requirement on the GSFA programs. In addition, the down payment assistance that our programs provide is up to five, excuse me, up to 7% of the loan amount. And that's a lot of money. We're gonna look at an example of how much cash that really can give them. The income limits are extremely flexible. In fact, we don't even have income limits on government loans, but we'll dive into that a little bit more as well as some of the qualifying guidelines. But I'd like to start off with dispelling the myth that you have to be uh, per, you have to have perfect credit or that um, you can't have any debts or liabilities. It's very flexible. FICO scores are allowed as low as 620 and even debt to income ratios up to 50% can qualify. Variety of different financing options and the programs are available throughout the state of California. On your screen is an example of utilizing our Open Doors program to purchase a house at the maximum loan that we can actually finance through the program. The loan amount that the maximum is 548.250. So I'm using a scenario of the highest amount of purchase price, the highest sales price on a home that would allow you to only use the down payment and closing cost assistance from Golden State Finance Authority to buy that house, okay? So this example is a home of 565,000. They have cash of their own, they would be able to purchase higher than this. If they had resources to cover the closing costs, they could pur purchase higher than this by using all of the money we provide towards the principal. But this is an example, $565,000, and that um, allows them 7% or up to 7% in assistance. That comes to $38,363, and leaving them with a mortgage loan of $548.50. Now, $38,000, imagine that. That is enough to cover the minimum required on down for a conventional loan, a conventional loan that, that only requires 3% down. That's enough to cover that $16,950 in down. And it leaves them with another $21,000 for closing costs. They have some cash of their own. They can apply that additional $21,000, apply the entire $38,000 coming from Golden State Finance Authority towards the transaction. And that would allow them to purchase probably up to about 580,000. And just showing you an example here um, of how the affordability can be uh, maximized through using down payment and closing cost assistance. Now we have two different down payment programs. The first one is called Platinum. It's been around a little bit longer. It's been around since 2010. It's our most popular one. And the reason is because for certain occupations in law enforcement, firefighting, and all the support staff in, um, in schools, whether public or private, and within the medical and healthcare industries, we provide the down payment assistance for this program, Platinum, as a gift on the first day that escrow closes. 
So they start out with equity in their home on day one and don't have to pay back that assistance. Now, outside of these specialized occupations, the rest of the borrowers are getting the down payment assistance as a 0% second mortgage instead, and it's forgiven after three years. So instead of a gift on day one, the other borrowers will be getting a, a second loan that has no interest, no payments, and after 36 months is completely forgiven. And that's what I think makes this program the most attractive to home buyers. But when you want to refer someone to a GSFA participating lender, the lender is going to dive into the nuances of these two programs and what's the right fit for them. And I'm just covering some of the highlights of these two programs. The Platinum program allows um, 640 FICO score on conventional loans, 660 on FHA, and as low as 640 for VA and USDA mortgages. And then you'll notice that the um, maximum debt to income ratios are around 45 and sometimes up to 50% um, when the borrower has a little bit higher FICO. Now the second program is geared towards providing more in assistance. Platinum was able to provide 5%, Open Doors provides up to 7%. So the borrowers that don't have down payment money, but they also don't have closing cost money, sometimes being able to get up to 7% is gonna be a better fit. This program might be the better fit. Now, the assistance provided for the Open Doors program is provided as part gift, up to half of it as a gift, and the other half as what we call a um, 0% second mortgage that's due and payable when they sell the property or they refinance that mortgage or the mortgage loan itself is paid off. So there is a repayment of part of the assistance that's provided for this open doors program. But again, when you have a borrower that doesn't have a lot of cash resources and they can qualify for a mortgage today, this allows them to get into the property today to start building equity, start building financial security, knowing that the assistance that was provided to help them, up to half of it is completely forgiven and the other half they would pay back at some future date without any interest on it. The FICO scores that are allowed for the open doors program become a little bit more flexible. We can go down to 620 FICOs and up to 55% on debt to income ratios, um, depending on the underwriting approval. Now, all of the programs are for, both of the programs are for the purchase of a primary residence. It's gonna be a residence that they own or occupy, but the programs can go up to four units. And maybe you've never considered that. You have a borrower who has this picture of the perfect little property that they're looking for, but you know that we don't have the inventory out there and that they may have to start thinking outside the box. So consider how a borrower might actually be in a really good position by buying a duplex or a triplex. Up to four units can be financed with our down payment and closing cost assistance programs. All of the mortgages, whether they are government loans, FHA, VA, or USDA, or a conventional loan, they are 30 year fixed rate interest and the maximum loan amount, as I mentioned on the mortgage, the first mortgage is gonna be 548,250. Now, sometimes it's gonna be really um, advantageous for a borrower to go with conventional financing. And that's because those borrowers in a lower income bracket that can qualify for conventional financing are gonna get more attractive pricing, meaning better interest rates on the program. They're gonna get better coverage, um, better costs on their MI because they don't have to have as much mortgage insurance and they'll have a little bit more flexibility in the down payment options. But I don't want you to think that you have to be low income, you don't. Um, a borrower can qualify for FHA, VA and USDA loans, government loans, no matter what the income is, we don't have an income limit. Now you do have to refer to the agency guidelines. So if there is an USDA income limit for a property that might apply, we don't apply any income limits. And for conventional financing, our income limits are really high. 
There's an example here on the screen of San Bernardino, Los Angeles and Riverside County. And as you can see, it's a really high income. It's like 162,000 um, that they can still qualify for down payment and closing cost assistance. As I mentioned, there's some MI advantages, some mortgage insurance advantages because the coverage that they need on a conventional loan for the borrowers in a lower income bracket at 80% of area median income and below, their coverage level actually drops drastically. But you know, this is where the loan officer gets involved and what's gonna be the best fit for them. Now, as a real estate agent, I get a lot of questions about whether or not accessing or referring somebody to a down payment assistance program is gonna make the entire escrow um, slow down or make it more challenging, you know, and how can they reassure a seller or a buyer that down payment assistance is a good option that, that you know, a seller sh should, should not hesitate to take an offer with somebody who's getting down payment assistance. One of the biggest factors has to do with how we don't have any compliance review. We leave all of the actual mortgage loan processing and um, making sure that the borrower qualifies, we leave that to the lender. And so the only step where a lender is, is working directly with Golden State Finance Authority is at the time that they lock in the interest rate. And that when they do lock in the interest rate, they obtain a commitment for the down payment and closing cost money as well. And that step is really important. But once that lock is done, they are given those documents from Golden State Finance Authority and then they go through the mortgage loan just like they normally would, which means your lenders, your GSFA lenders can process um, down payment assistance programs in 30 days. I was on a call just the other day and we had a lender who was saying that they could do 22 days. So keep in mind that just because it's a down payment assistance program, when you work with GSFA's program, it's not going to slow down escrow. There isn't gonna be an additional compliance review step or additional forms that have to be turned in or a package that has to be reviewed that you then think could actually um, cause a problem during escrow. And the qualifying guidelines are so few. You yourself, if you had the ability, could, could talk to the borrower and mention the FICO kind of, the FICO limitations or FICO requirements of 620 or above or the DTI. You know, on our website, we have the income limits for conventional financing. So you're able to look at that. And then, you know, knowing the needs of the borrower, get them in touch with a lender that can really look further into their situation and figure out which program will be best. But I don't want you to take my word for it. Here on the screen is some testimonials from people who have actually written in letters thanking GSFA for the program, for getting in them into houses. And as you can see, you're looking at a borrower here that's getting 13,000, another that got 18,000, um, people who were renting for years and years, and even during COVID have been able to purchase a home and move into it. Now, how do you get started? As a, as a real estate agent, it's really important that you work with a GSFA participating lender, especially the ones who are experienced in GSFA programs because they're gonna understand the guidelines. They're going to you know, have a process in place for locking in the loan rate and getting that commitment letter, and they're gonna stay in contact with you. That is really important. Um, and so what I suggest for all of the real estate agents is to develop a one-on-one -on -one relationship with lenders and loan officers themselves so that you can do referrals the minute you find out that a borrower has a need for down payment and closing cost assistance. Our lenders are gonna be the one to furnish the interest rates and to provide the um, applicable uh, APRs. They're the ones that are gonna go through the application, the mortgage loan application process and check eligibility, and then determine whether it's the platinum program or the open doors program that's gonna be the best fit for the borrower. We don't expect real estate agents to memorize all the guidelines but understanding the key features of the program, understanding that they're more flexible than most people think, that they're not limited to first-time home buyers, that's the first step. Because once 
you believe in the value of these programs, you can then educate your borrowers and link them to GSFA participating lenders. Now, as Eric mentioned, um, we have done some videos on the website. And so if you would like a more in-depth uh, look at either the Platinum or the Open Doors program, we highly encourage that you visit the website and um, look at the program pages. There's the videos on our YouTube pages as well. Um, and also on the Power Is Now uh, website as well. These videos really dive into how the programs work. There's even a video with um, a couple who have used the Platinum program and share their experience. First Bank is one of our participating lenders. You have Eric with us today, so I highly encourage reaching out to him. His contact information is here. Thank you for joining me. Well, everyone, I can't believe it. I just finished my first show on the Power Is Now TV. I hope the information was beneficial. If I could be of any assistance to you on buying or selling a home, please contact me at 951-316-0374. My name is Jenny Gonzalez with Keller Wins Corona. My license number is 01249788. And I've been licensed since 1998. And my website is jennygsellshomes.com. And everybody have a blessed day. Carolyn, you always do a fantastic job in explaining the program. And I really appreciate you taking time today to uh, go through it uh, in as much detail as you can at this time. We do have some questions uh, in the Q&A, and I want to invite those who are on the, on the, uh, the, the webinar to uh, type your questions into the Q&A, and uh, we'll be sure to get your questions answered uh, before we end this webinar. Uh, Carolyn, before we, uh, and as the questions are coming in, I'm going to start with a few questions on my own. Uh, one of the significant uh, differences between the Open Door Program and the Platinum Program is that a portion of the Open Door, and which is one half of the, say, 7% that is utilized, has to be paid back. Is there a particular reason why half has to be paid back on Open Door Whereas on the platinum program, uh, it is completely forgiven over, uh, say, uh, the, a three-year period. It's a great question, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds. But what it comes down to is that we put a program together with a loan servicing company. And that loan servicing company works with us because they are going to actually be purchasing the loans from all of the participating lenders and, um, and then servicing those loans at a later date. Servicing is where the, the home buyer, the homeowner ends up sending their um, payments and getting their invoices from, um, you know, that, that is an additional step once somebody closes a loan. So each program has a master servicer and that master servicer and GSFA discuss some of the things that they are willing to take on as risk, what kind of um, parameters that they might like to look at in terms of the guidelines. Now, most of the mortgage guidelines that we follow for the GSFA programs are going to be your standard mortgage guidelines. But as you saw, there's a couple of overlays. The minimum FICO score requirement of 620 for the Open Doors program, that is um, what we've established for that specific program with the master servicer. And for the Platinum program, I believe that the minimum FICO is 640. So there's um, slight differences depending on how we structure that program. Usually, you will see that there's a slight difference in the pricing or the interest rates depending on some of the features. So with the Open Doors program, because we are making available more money in down payment and closing costs, up to 7% instead of up to 5%, because we are extending that accessibility down to a little bit lower FICO score, a little higher debt to income ratio, it adds a measure of risk. And because of that, we have structured with the servicer that a portion of the assistance is paid back at a future date because we need to make sure that this program continues to fund itself. The mortgages are securitized and then those securities are sold on the investment market in many cases, and that is how we're able to funnel money back in. And so there's always an element of risk that we have to negotiate. So 
the more flexibility we add, we may have to have some structures that are different. And for platinum, we have a different servicer and their agreements are slightly different. And so that program was structured to be forgiven, assistance forgiven after three years or for all those special occupations immediately for the open doors program. Half of it is forgiven immediately and half of it does get a repayment. But keep in mind, there's no interest rate on that loan. So they're not accruing interest on that money, which is, is helpful. It's just a portion of that assistance paid back at a future date. Carolyn, you have cited in the past uh, that uh, a stat by the Urban Institute that many people still think that you need 20% uh, down to, um, you know, purchase a home. And then there's another group of people that maybe they have the money, but they just feel the rate is too high uh, to, uh, you know, utilize this program as opposed to doing a traditional FHA loan where the rate is currently below 3%. You know, how do you respond to that? It's a good topic to discuss because it seems like we're inundated all the time with interest rates in advertising. You know, a lender wants, some, wants the business because they're offering the lowest rate out there. And I think that we can get caught up in price instead of value. And it's also important that we understand um, the, the customer interaction, the experience, and the and that transaction going well, that that's quality as well. Um, so there, the down payment assistants are here as a tool. They are not uh, the right fit for every situation and every borrower, but they are a tool. They're an additional resource when borrowers are challenged by things like not having cash resources, not wanting to use all their resources, um, not having enough in down payment to buy at the price that they're looking for. Um, needing to, to save up more, and that means maybe waiting another three years and maybe getting priced out of the market. Um, you know, rents are not going down. And in, most, in many cases, I talk to borrowers who are renting at or above what a mortgage would cost them. And so it is a matter of, deciding where, what you're trying to accomplish today. If today you have $30,000 to buy a home, you have no problem with the mortgage payment and you are fine with a, you know, utilizing all that cash resource today, that and maybe the interest rate is gonna be lower than our down payment assistance program, that might be the right fit. But all of us have gone through a lot of uncertainty in the last two years. And many people have realized that utilize, using all of their savings may not be the best fit. And if you can access half of that money from an agency that is either gonna forgive half of it or forgive all of it at some point and hold on to the rest of those reserves um, as some security and it meaning that your interest rate is slightly higher, you need to look at the difference in payment. I mean, what if that payment is $80 more a month, is that $80 or that $150, is that worth the peace of mind of holding on to half of your savings? And there are some people where they have no cash resources and it may take them five years to come up with $30,000. And in five years, home prices are gonna be higher. We don't know if their income is gonna fluctuate high enough to cover a higher um, price. And so is it their step in today? Is it the opportunity today that they can take to get into real estate as a way to develop financial security and build wealth versus waiting five years? And it's not always going to be the right fit, but they're here and they're being utilized all the time. They're here because in many cases, that down payment is the biggest challenge. I agree with you. Um, it is the biggest challenge. And even for people who have the money, um, they have to ask themselves, uh, and it's a very serious question, especially 
in light of COVID-19 and of course before that the great financial crisis, it just seems like there's always something that can disrupt your income. So if you can you know, keep you know, money in the bank and not be completely broke uh, at the close of escrow, I mean, I think it's just, it just makes sense. And especially if you still qualify with a higher payment and you can afford the higher payment um, uh, under the Golden State Finance Program. I was just looking at some numbers here. Um, the payment at your current rate for 625,000, uh, I believe that was the sales price, 625, uh, loan amount of 613, uh, 679. Uh, the payment would be 3843 uh, at a 3% rate. And the rates have been fluctuating between 2.7, 2.875, the 3% uh, for a standard FHA loan. At 4.125, the payment would be $4,231. So there's a there's a you know about a three to four hundred dollar increase in payment, which would amount to be about thirty six hundred to forty eight hundred dollars a year. But you typically need just a closing cost and down payment about seven percent of the purchase price. So it's still going to take you a while to get in uh, if you don't um, uh, if you if you need to save the money. So. I would agree with you. Now, I'm mentioning 625. Your current loan limit is 548,250. Um, and uh, do you anticipate your limit going up to what FA, FHFA has announced to be the, the new higher loan limit? Yes, I do anticipate that our loan limit will follow uh, the increase in conforming loan limits when they're announced officially. Um, but we haven't made that change internally and because it, it's not an official announcement yet, but we, we do anticipate it. And keep in mind that the example that you used was a $625,000 purchase price. Um, we are you know, seeing across California, and I know every area is a little different, metropolitan areas are more expensive, but our average loan amount is around 410. And so there's a lot of areas where um, you know, that payment difference uh, with an with a, with a interest rate that's an eighth or a quarter higher, or maybe even a half a point higher, is not going to be a $400 increase. So it does depend on, of course, what the, the borrower's um, mortgage loan is. And, and, and then it's a matter of looking and seeing, does that make sense? You know, does it make sense to wait, keep saving the money, or get into that property now? And um, you know, I just I don't want people to hesitate just about interest rates. At least put your borrowers in touch with a lender and let them look at the situation and make some recommendations for the borrower to consider. Because if you aren't telling your borrowers at all about down payment assistance, then you're missing the opportunity. You may be turning customers away today that it might be the right fit for. No, you're absolutely right. And then too, we're talking about 5% uh, on a typical FHA transaction. The minimum contribution is 3.5%. On a conventional loan, uh, which you do both, it's 3%. Closing costs can run on the average in the 35 to 4% range. So you're looking at between 7 and 7.5% 7 .5 that a client needs to purchase a home. So even with down payment assistance, the client needs to still bring in about 2% of the purchase price in order to close. Uh, so just on your example, if your average loan amount is around 400,000, so a client is still gonna need between 8,000 to $10,000 in cash of their own money. But your open door program actually closes that gap even more, right? Because of the 7%. Yeah. and. You know, I don't have the, the rates and the APRs right in front of me today. But what I can say is that the Open Doors program is a slightly more competitive interest rate than the Platinum program. And again, refer, set up a network with, with First Bank, with Eric, with, you know, a lender that you know is, is familiar with this program, you know, can, can really dive into the borrower's situation, look at the interest rates, look at different scenarios of how much in assistance and what works for them. Um, but definitely don't hesitate to look into down payment assistance. It's not going to slow down your escrow. You know, Golden State Finance Authority's money is not running out. These programs are ongoing funding sources. 
It's not a pool of money that when you go to refer your client, it's gone. And there's no first time home buyer requirement. And many down payment assistance programs do have that requirement and we don't. Um, you know, and so whether your borrower is a first time home buyer or somebody looking to purchase again that used to own a home or they have a home today, but they're buying another primary residence and they would really benefit from, you know, 20, 15, 20, $30,000 to help them get into the transaction, refer them over and look into the programs. Hey, Carolyn, there are so many things that differentiate the Golden State Finance Authority from any state or county or city down payment assistance programs. Uh, the first being, uh, you've mentioned this several times, that you don't have to be a first time home buyer. And uh, we have many people who, over the last 10 years, uh, including yours truly, we've experienced tremendous appreciation in our properties. Uh, it's an opportunity for those who are looking at, thinking about selling to put a lot more cash away for retirement because owning real estate is a great vehicle uh, to set yourself up for retirement. But at the same time, be able to leverage a program like this and use very little of your cash from yourself to get into another property. Uh, to me, that's a game changer uh, for most people who would love to use other people's money, right? OPM, uh, to get into another property. And the fact that you have options uh, from 5% and down payment assistance under the platinum program to up to 7%. And at 7%, that gap that I was describing of about 2% on the, on the average can go down potentially to nothing. And if we see the market continue to move, where we see incur, we, we're seeing more inventory come on the market and we're seeing properties take longer. We're seeing less transactions happen with multiple offers. And so things are changing and we may even get back to a buyer's market. Now, Mango asked a question. He says, you know, 7% DPA uh, what would be realistic uh, for the, a, a bar? What's what's a realistic borrower financial situation uh, in terms of the prerequisites? And uh, I want to just say to, to Mango that first, the guidelines are really, really easy. First, you got to have the FICO score of 640. And if the score isn't there, then we need to look at the platinum program. And so whenever I'm talking with a client, Carolyn, I never tell them what to do. I look at their situation and I give them my advice based on my analysis of their income, their assets, and everything. And I have to tell you, when clients equally qualify for both programs, many are choosing the Platinum program because they don't have to pay the money back, especially if they are first responders or teachers or, you know, or, you know anyone working in that capacity, police, uh, they are hands down going with Platinum as opposed to open door. What do you think about that? No, I think it's a great fit. Um, I, if it's the best solution, absolutely. Um, Platinum provides up to 5%. And for anyone working in healthcare medical professions, that just means that your employer is a healthcare medical institution, company, et cetera. Um, anyone who works in schools, whether that is an administrator or someone who handles the maintenance of the facilities or a librarian or a teacher, doesn't matter. You work for a school, even vocational schools, public, private schools, um, elementary schools, colleges, it doesn't matter. You work for a school or you're a firefighter or support staff for a firefighter. Um, and again, you're, you're looking at people who do dispatch, who answer phones. Um, law enforcement is the same. It's all the support staff for law enforcement, just not just you know, the people that are out in the field. Um, those occupations, and I think I'm forgetting emergency medical technician is in there as well, paramedics, um, any of those occupations, it makes sense to go with the platinum program because all of the money that you get for down payment assistance is forgiven immediately. That's called our platinum select feature. And it is our way of, you know, structuring the program to really focus on the needs of, of some of these occupations that are underpaid, um, you know, have really been uh, put on the front lines the last couple of years. And, and just they're the ones that are serving the public at, you know, a, a different level. And we can't do it across everything, but we have been able to set that up for 
you know, these certain occupations. And then keep in mind for the other borrowers, the platinum down payment assistance may not be forgiven the first day, but it's forgiven after three years. And so each year we forgive a third of it. And after 36 months, all of it is forgiven. And even with open doors, half of it is forgiven. So, you know, that forgivability is a really special feature that we're proud to offer in our down payment assistance programs that you don't always see um, with other programs. Um, so keep that in mind. You're absolutely right. It is, it is highly unusual. And on top of that, a person only has to stay in this property for one year. And so should there be a job change or anything like that, or maybe a health concern or any, for any reason, uh, after one year, a person can either sell or they can move and buy another property. Uh, there's no restrictions on how long they need to be in the property. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, it also opens that door. I've mentioned people who are, have a home today, but they're purchasing a primary residence. You know, most people think, well, I'm not a first time home buyer. Why would I look into down payment assistance? But if it's other people's money that can help you purchase that new home you're going to be living in, why not look at it? Um, and we even offer government loans, FHA loans, um, conventional financing, where someone doesn't need down payment assistance. And amazingly enough, you may not believe this, but we have off, we offer interest rates on our FHA product where no, there's no assistance provided. They're coming in with their own money for down. And oftentimes our interest rate on that product through our programs is lower than lenders can offer. So you develop that relationship with First Bank or one of the lenders, refer your borrower over even when they are looking at an FHA loan or a government loan and, and don't need the financial assistance. They have cash because the interest rates through the programs when you don't need assistance can get very competitive. You know, you're absolutely right, Carolyn. So uh, for those who are watching uh, as of today, uh, if you don't need assistance, you can get an FHA loan at 2.25%, 2.25% with no mortgage insurance. You can get a conventional loan uh, at, uh, let's see, 3.3, uh, 3 .3, actually at 3.375, that has mortgage insurance, I'm looking at the Golden State interest rate uh, portal. Now, here's the thing, uh, First Bank, nor any lender, none of us are able to set the rate. The rate is determined ultimately by you, right, Carolyn? Yes, that is true. The interest rates are set through the programs through GSFA, that is correct. So uh, I love that uh, it's a very transparent situation. You can go to the website, see for yourself, uh, and as an advisor, you know, I would never want a buyer to think that, you know, somehow I'm not giving them the very best that I can offer. Uh, that's the case not only with Golden State uh, Finance Authority, but that's the case with all of the bank products that First Bank has to offer. Now, uh, one of the things I love about your program is that it's an opportunity for real estate agents to differentiate themselves in the marketplace, you know, being specialists. If if you will, for doctors or, you know, medical professionals or police or fire. We all know somebody that probably works in these areas. Um, Shalanda asks, do you have any uh, co-branding opportunities for real estate agents to market your program? That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked it. On our website, there is a main menu on the homepage that's called Lender Realtor Resources. And that's where you can find um, webinars if you wanna uh, watch more information about the programs. There's also a page called Marketing Support. And on that page are flyers and brochures in English and in Spanish for both the Open Doors program and the Platinum program, and even the Platinum Select feature. Um, and you can download those flyers and brochures. There are embedded text fields in them so that you can put your contact information hopefully a lender that you're working with as well, and use them to market the programs. You don't have to memorize everything. You have it right there on a flyer, these highlights. Um, you can hand them out. You can attach them to your listings. You, you, you know, please use our marketing literature. We purposely make those templates available to help lenders and real estate agents promote the programs. 
and we don't put our contact information on them in, on purpose so that you can draw the business directly to you. Carolyn, you not only do you not put the your contact information on those flyers, but there's no reason uh, for the client to deal directly with the Golden State Finance Authority because you don't actually make the loans, you don't approve the loans, you simply are facilitating this uh, transaction uh, between the buyer and the lender, correct? Yeah, we're a housing finance entity, which means that we can structure programs around standard mortgage products and set some guidelines around them. Um, it's, a, it's a very special uh, thing as an agency that we're able to do. And, but we have to depend on a network of lenders to actually take the mortgage loan applications and process the mortgages, process the underwriting and the qualifying. Um, and so a home buyers can always call Golden State Finance Authority for information. But ultimately, to get started, we're going to need to link them to one of the participating lenders. And that is so important. So feel free to visit the website. Utilize our videos as resources, our marketing literature. Feel free to call our office with questions, whether it's you or a home buyer. But ultimately, you've got to make that connection to First Bank, to one of our participating lenders, so that your borrower can access the programs. I am so glad that First Bank is a participant.
The Power Is Now Media is worldwide with growing audience of future home buyers, investors, builders, developers, real estate agents, and brokers. The Power Is Now Media is well positioned to increase awareness and produce results for our growing roster of advertising partners. An advertisement on any of our platforms is the right step toward reaching and communicating key brand messages to a targeted network of individuals, families, and communities interested in housing. Our content areas include feature stories and profiles on successful real estate agents, business owners, government, and community leaders. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, real estate, and programming guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate and mortgage news and information from industry experts. VIP agents are able to feature listings each week. The Power Is Now TV radio podcast features weekly shows that include Homebuyers Town Hall, Real Estate Roundtable, VIP Agent Spotlight, and so much more. Each week, VIP agents have opportunities to be featured guests on the shows. VIP agents can discuss and showcase houses, neighborhoods, and provide brief introductions. The interviews are unlimited 10 to 15 minutes on each current listing. This product alone separates you from your competition. The Power Is Now delivers to you market update interview to promote listing weekly, promotional biographical video, co-host a bi-monthly homebuyers town hall show, featured subject matter expert on real estate roundtable show, The Power Is Now program guide e-magazine, The Power Is Now national e-magazine, article writing and blogging, social media content customization, inclusion and press releases, graphic design services, business and performance coaching, technology support, referrals, lead generation opportunities, and management support.